He was always bigger than life, the king of the sport of kings, Secretariat. The most famous thoroughbred of our time, maybe the best there ever was. His racing career spanned just 16 months from July of 1972 until near the end of October 1973. But his impact on the sport has transcended time. On nine different racetracks, on dirt and grass, he made 21 starts with 16 first, three seconds, a third, and a fourth, with earnings of $1,316,808. It has been said by experienced horsemen that physically and mentally, Secretariat was the closest there has ever been to the perfect racehorse. The massive chestnut with three white stockings, a star, and a narrow strip stood 16 hands, one and a half inches, and weighed over 1,100 pounds. His girth was so immense at 76 inches that he needed a custom-made saddle girth. Tests indicated his heart weighed from 14 to 17 pounds, the largest among any equine champions examined, and his stride measured an amazing 25 feet. In his two-year career, he won five year-end Eclipse Awards, champion two-year-old colt, champion three-year-old colt, champion turf horse, and horse of the year in 1972, and again in 1973. But his legendary status came not from titles nor track records, but from three races in the spring of 1973, when he became the sport's first Triple Crown winner in a quarter of a century. This then is his story, as we take you from the beginning to the end of the life and times of Secretariat, an American racing legend. He came into the world at 12.10 a.m. on the cold, clear night of March 30th, 1970, at the Thoroughbred Farm in Dowswell, Virginia, known as the Meadow. The product of Ogden Phipps's great racehorse and leading sire, Bold Ruler, and the C.T. Chenery-owned mare, Something Royal. In a lifetime of chance, it was actually the loss of a coin toss between Ogden Phipps and Penny Tweedy in 1969 that gave the meadow its miracle. The miracle came in the form of a colt with three white feet and a star and a stripe on the forehead. These were the first five names submitted to the jockey club, but not available for the colt. They wanted to name him Scepter, then Royal Line, or how about something special, or Games of Chance, or Deo Valente, Latin for God willing. All were rejected. Finally, the sixth name submitted was accepted. The name was Secretariat. Penny Tweedy had these early remembrances of Secretariat. He was the boss of the herd. He was frisky. He was, um, didn't hang around his mother, who was kind of an old lady by then. And he was very much in command from the time that I first saw him. Secretariat's regular rider, Ron Turcott, wasn't quite as impressed. Well, I can be like a lot of people and say I knew right from the beginning. From the day I set sight on him. But I'd be lying to you. Because there's so many great looking horses that don't amount to very much. He was a great looking animal and uh, was very manageable horses. You know, you could do anything with him. Uh, the only thing is that he didn't know which leg to put down first when the first time I worked him. I got beat some like uh, 16 of a mile or better, going a quarter of a mile by, uh, I don't recall the horse's name now. Anyway, he ran in the derby the same year he was in front. But uh, it didn't come around till about June before he started, started working real good. You know, you knew all the time he had quality, quality but he had to be to fill into it. And, uh, but when it comes to racing there, he had it all from the beginning. Trainer Lucian Lauren remembers thinking the colt was just too good looking to be a good racehorse. And it took an equipment change to turn Secretariat around. I was working him, but he wouldn't go by a horse, he wouldn't do hardly nothing. So I finally put blankers on him and you wouldn't believe it. I took him to the gate 
and with them blinkers, honest to God, he went five eights and fifty eight and three. Even the clocker thought of he says, Have we got the right horse, Lucian? I says, I guess we have. So I was very tickled. So uh, I worked him once more with a three year old, make sure that I was in the fluke, you know. And, and uh, that three year old was a pretty nice horse, and he even beat the three year old. So I called Mrs. Tweedy and I says, We are ready. And we have a horse I think it can run. Secretariat started for the first time in his career at Aqueduct Racetrack in New York, July 4th, 1972. He was the three to one favorite. At the break, Secretariat got sandwiched between Quebec and Big Bird. Mug in his first start. The Colt recovered to make a big run and finished fourth. He would never finish that far back again. In his second start, again under jockey Paul Feliciano, Secretariat got off to another slow start, but then roared into the stretch and pulled away to win by six lengths. It was his first trip to the winner's circle. In a race for non-winners of two on Saratoga's opening day of 1972, Ron Turcott took over the reins for the first time, and the big colt circled the field to win by a length and a half. He won his first stakes test, the Sanford, but it was in the hopeful that he really impressed his trainer and rider. I don't think a three-year-old in the history has ever run so fast from the half-mile pool to the quarter pool or he went on in just galloping. I've never been on a horse that runs that fast, that early, and, and keep going through the stretch. Then I knew I thought I had a good race on he would go on to win seven of his nine starts at two, earn $456,404, winning at distances from six furlongs to a mile and a sixteenth, over fast tracks and muddy tracks. And he was voted 1972's Horse of the Year as a two-year-old, the first time in its 36-year history that the Daily Racing Forum had ever honored a two-year-old as its Horse of the Year. As Secretariat was preparing for his three-year-old season in Florida at Hialeah Park, he had already set a world record syndicated by Claiborne Farm into 32 shares, 190,000 per share, a total of $6,080,000. His 1973 debut came at Aqueduct in the Bay Shore. Secretariat won by four and a half lengths. And then in his next start, the Gotham Stakes, he equaled the track record for the mile, winning by three lengths in 133 and two. The Secretariat Express to the Kentucky Derby was derailed in his final prep race in New York, the Wood Memorial. Trainer Lucian Lauren had a two-horse entry, Secretariat and Angle Light. Angle Light led all the way and held off Sham to win by a head, with Secretariat the victim of the slow pace, finishing third, four lengths back. Owner Penny Tweedy vividly remembers her reaction to the defeat. Despair. What, what could have gone wrong and um, just a, a lot of... Uh, a lot of worry. Turcotte talked about the reason for Secretariat's defeat in the wood. Uh, he wasn't right for the for the wood memorial. He uh, he had an abscess, and uh, every time I try to pick him up, they throw his head and back up. And uh, had I known before it, I would have turned his head loose and hope he'd go on from there. But I kept trying to ride him as usual, but he he was too sensitive, and uh, I didn't like his. Uh, uh, you know, the way he was handling himself and then turning for home, Cordero kept cr carrying us out, which made me take a hold of him to the right rein again and that stopped him from making that late run again. Um, I would say the, uh, the effect of the, uh, the abscess uh, took its toll in the Wood Memorial. For Penny, the upset in that race before the Derby was like a release valve. In a sense, it took pressure off because he he was no longer unbeatable. Now he was just another candidate for the race. I was, you never want to lose a race, but it did make it easier for us to have him be beaten before we went to Kentucky. But there was no relief for trainer Lucian Lauren. Rumors ran rampant that Secretariat was not sound. He had bad knees. He didn't have the right breeding. There was a lot of rumor around that the bull ruler wouldn't go over a mile. Lucky he just like the rest of them wouldn't go a mile and eight, wouldn't do this, wouldn't do that. And uh, and Mrs. Tweedy is such a wonderful sport. She says, "Well, what do you think, Lucian?" Well, I says, "Mrs. Tweedy, I think he'll go a mile and a quarter." The painful abscess in Secretariat's mouth still hadn't broken when Turcott flew down to Kentucky to work him for the first time at Churchill Downs. 
I was not impressed at all with his work. Matter of fact, I was very disappointed. You know, he kept throwing his head the same thing. But that's when Sweat, the groom, told me that his, the abscess had broke and uh, it should be, uh, should be better. But the next time I flew down to work him, there he was back to himself and he just flew. And uh, I was very confident then. And the jockey remembers a meeting in Kentucky when the decision was being made whether or not Secretariat should even run in the Kentucky Derby. Mr. Chenry, uh, Mr. Lauren, and myself, and uh, they wanted to know if I thought the horse could win the Derby because he was syndicated for a lot of money, and if I didn't think he, he would win it, then he shouldn't run. And Anyway, I told them that I was confident that he could outrun a horse going, going a mile, any horse going a mile. And all I had to do was gallop him the first quarter of a mile and, uh, you know, let him take his time. So they told me, they said, well, you're the rider, and if you think you can win the race, we'll run him. Good afternoon. This is Churchill Downs, Louisville, Kentucky, on this first Saturday in May, 1973. As Secretariat came on the track, his fans showed their support, making him the three to two favorite. But still, there were the doubts. Secretariat, number 1A, walked quietly into post position number 10 in this 13-horse field, and then into derby history. Moments from a start. They're at the post. All standing well as we wait for the start. Secretary throws his head a bit. And they're off for the lead. On the inside, that's Angle Light for the lead. On the outside, Shecky Green, Royal and Regal. Then on the rail, it's Restless Jet, followed by Our Native. Up on the outside is Gold Bag. They're by the stands for the first time. Shecky Green is showing the way by a length and a half. Royal and Regal now being moved to the inside, looking for room. Gold Bag is up on the outside. Then on the rail, it's Angle Light, followed by Sham. Our Native, Restless Jet. It's my gallant, then Forgo. On the outside, Navajo, followed by Secretariat, Warbucks, and finally, twice a prince. They're moving on the turn. The leader is Shecky Green, leading by two and a half lengths. Goldbag is second by a head. Sham now third on the outside by two lengths. Royal and Regal fourth. Two lengths, then back to Angle Light in fifth. The Secretariat has made a sudden move and is now sixth. Then it's Restless Jet. Our native beginning to move up. Navajo, Borgo, and Warbucks beginning to move up, followed by Mike Gallup and twice a prince. They're into the turn and bunching for the lead with Shecky Green, still the leader by a half a length. On the outside and challenging is Sham, and he's now got a head in front. Now Shecky Green responds to the challenge, and those two are heads apart. Royal and Regal is third and holding on. Goldbag drops back. Secretariat is fourth and moving up on the outside and is now third and moving at the leaders as they come for the head of the stretch. They're at the head of the stretch and Cham is the leader. He leads it by a length. Secretariat is in the center of the racetrack and driving. Jackie Green now drops back. Coming on a bit is Forgo, our native on the outside. Now and they're in the stretch. It's sec Secretariat. Secretariat on the outside to take the lead. Sham holding in second. It's Secretariat moving away. He has it by two and a half. Sham then on the outside, our native. At the wire, it's going to be Secretariat. He wins it by two lengths. Sham is second. Our native third by an F. Forgo is fourth. Restless Jet is fifth. And it looked like Navajo might have gotten up for six. He broke slowly as he learned to do he you said he got mugged in his first race and he after that he just decided he was not going to contest those first few jumps and he he r ran the race just exactly as we had had planned it and ronnie never had to ask him to to move he seemed to understand what he was going to do they're into the turn and bunching for the lead with shecky green still the leader by a half a length on the outside and challenging is Sham, and he's now got a head in front. Now Shecky Green responds to the challenge, and those two are heads apart. Royal and Regal is third and holding on. Goldbag drops back. Secretariat is fourth and moving up on the outside, and is now third and moving at the leaders as they come for the head of the stretch. 
They're at the head of the stretch, and Chan is the leader. He leads it by a length. Secretariat is in the center of the racetrack and driving. Jackie Green now drops back. Coming on a bit is Forgo, our native on the outside. Now and then the stretch, it's sec Secretariat. Secretariat on the outside to take the lead. Sham holding in second. It's Secretariat moving away. He has it by two and a half. Sham then on the outside, our native. At the wire, it's going to be Secretariat. He wins it by two lengths. Secretariat had answered all the questions, dispelled all the rumors, as he ran the first sub-two-minute derby in history, 159-2 for a new track record. As Secretariat celebrated in the winner's circle at Churchill Downs on that first Saturday in May 1973, Penny Tweedy reflected on what her colt had learned from that defeat in the wood. Secretariat was a very intelligent horse, and when he was beaten, he was angry. He was angry at himself, and after the wood, his head was in the corner of his stall, and I just had the feeling that he figured out, I'm not gonna do that again. And the, ne the next time he came out and ran the race, he knew how to, to run, and he just walked his beat. Old Hilltop, Pimlico Racecourse, Baltimore, Maryland, May 19th, 1973, Preakness Day. The pressure was turned up on Secretariat's connections because it was at this site the year before that Meadow Stables' Reva Ridge lost his chance for the 1972 Triple Crown. Front-running winner of the Derby and the Belmont, Reva Ridge couldn't handle the sloppy track that day in the Preakness and finished a well-beaten fourth as the strong 1-5 favorite. As Secretariat, also the 1-5 fan's choice, was being dressed for the occasion in the Pimlico infield, he was forming his own race strategy that caught everyone by surprise including owner Penny Tweedy. As they came past the stands the first time, he was with horses, he wasn't way back, and suddenly he just, he made a leap forward all on his own, as if, hey, I'm ready to go. And he just took off, and Ronnie hadn't asked him, it was, it was not when we planned that he was gonna move, he just decided to do it, and that, that just, I thought, okay, we've got this one straightens up a little secretariat bobs his head we're still looking and they're off for the early lead that's deadly dream on the outside at coley taj then it's also torsion on the outside they're coming by us it's a coley taj getting it and he's still moving away by about two and a half as they pass the stands settling into second torsion sham has good position third on the rail it's another three lengths back deadly dream then our native and secretariat is last again as they move into the first turn they're into the turn. A Coley Taj has it by two lengths. Torsion second by a length, and then Sham third. Sham under an easy hold right now. But here comes Secretariat. He's moving fast, and he's going to the outside. He's going for the lead, and it's right now he's looking for it. Ronnie Turcott sends him alongside a Coley Taj. Here we have it. A Coley Taj is the leader, but Sham, rather, Secretariat is right alongside. Then still further back, that is Sham now going to the outside in third. We're moving down the back stretch. Secretariat holding it by a length and a half. Here comes Sham second on the outside now. Now it's Secretariat the leader by a length and a half with Sham moving into second. And it looks like Ecole Taj has had it, dropping back in third. Coming on in fourth is our native, and he's pretty close. Torsion fifth, and a trailer way back is Deadly Dream. They're on the turn, and here's the race, folks. Secretariat trying to hold it, and Sham is driving to get him. These two are beginning to open a few lengths as our native settles into third, and he has about three lengths on Ecole Taj. Head of the stretch, Secretariat, two and a half. Sham under a strong left-handed whip, and he's making his run now, but it's still Secretariat holding on. Secretariat by two lengths. Sham driving second. There's a strong left-handed whip again by Tinkai. He goes to it time and time again, but Ronnie Turcott has his whip put away, and Secretariat has him put away. He's beginning to draw away. It is Secretariat. He's coming to the wire. He wins it by two and a half, almost three. Sham, an easy second. Our native third. A Coley dodge for a deadly dream fifth. And Torsion is six, and it was a powerhouse race again by the big, strong Secretariat, who made a very, very swift move on the backstretch, took the lead surprisingly. The victory wasn't in question, just the time. The track teletimer said 155, a full second slower than the track record. But the Daily Racing Forum's chief clockers, from different vantage points, hand timed the winner in 153 and 2. As Secretariat came into the winner's circle, word was spreading about the time discrepancy. 
It was a controversy that led to a special hearing before the Maryland Racing Commission, where CBS television showed an identical frame-by-frame -frame match of that 1973 Preakness on the bottom and track record holder Canada II's 1971 Preakness on the top of the screen. The results? Secretariat was almost two lengths faster than the old 154 record time. But despite the overwhelming proof, Maryland racing officials would only agree to clocker E.T. McLean Jr.'s hand timing of 154 and two-fifths seconds for the race. But the Daily Racing Forum, on its official chart of that 1973 Preakness, noted forever its disagreement, adding their own footnote. Daily Racing Forum time, 153 and two-fifths seconds. New track record. Ron Turcott reflects back on Secretariat's effort in the Preakness. Secretary was always the kind of horse that loved to run around turns. He was a lefty, you know, that means he le led with his left foot all the time, and he flew around turns. Uh, when we came around the first time, uh, passing the wire the first time around, I started to draw behind them horses, and the, uh, uh, I looked up ahead and I seen they were, they all folded up on their horse, they were backing down a little bit, so I just swung him out so I wouldn't get trapped in the inside. But he just breezed by them and, uh, Went by everybody around the first turn, took the lead around the three-quarter pole, and, and the rest was history. Shane was trying to catch him. Uh, um, Lafitte was whipping to beat, it, to beat hell, and uh, I kept hearing him there. I hated to be that horse. Jeez, that poor Shane, he must have got a beating there. Anyway, um, he won with something in the reserve. I kept thinking the Belmont and, you know, I have something in the reserve. I didn't want to use him up. In the three weeks between the Preakness and the Belmont, Secretariat transcended sports and became a national phenomenon. He appeared on the covers in the same week of Time, Newsweek, and Sports Illustrated. Penny Tweedy remembers all the attention and all the pressure. It just was every day, one more day until race day. Uh, I had no idea whether or not he could do it but I knew that he would be as fit as Lucian could possibly make him and that he'd, he had grown intellectually and he was mentally much more professional an athlete than he had been earlier, say, in the wood. And so I felt that everything was right for it, but we had still to do it. But Ron Turcott and Lucian Lauren never had any doubts he would do it. We had won the uh, Belmont with Reva Ridge the year before and we... Uh, he worked about two, second, two full seconds faster for the mile for the Belmont that River Ridge had done, and we were very, very confident. I mean, matter of fact, I told Mr. Lauren when we went out for dinner that night when we had a few drinks, maybe we were probably a little overconfident then, and the competition wasn't there, you know, when you're having the drinks there. But uh, I told Mr. Lauren, I said, if this horse gets beat, I'm going to hang up my tack. And uh, Mr. Lauren, said the same thing. He said, I'm going to quit training this horse gets beat. That is our confidence we were the of the race. Horse, and we're ready to go for this tremendous Belmont stick. Everybody's in line, and they're off. Looks like the early lead goes to Mike Gallant. Yes, Mike Gallant going for the lead with Christ the Prince on the outside. Secretary to weigh very well, has good position on the rail, and in fact is now going up with the leader. They're moving for the first turn. It is Secretariat. Sham on the outside is also moving along strongly. And now it's Sham. Sham and Secretariat are right together into the first turn. Mike Gallant has third behind them. Then it's twice the Prince, and the trailer is Private Smiles as they go by the turn. Those two together, Sham on the outside. Sham getting ahead in front as they move around the turn with Secretariat second. Then there's a large gap. Make it eight lengths back to Mike Gallant in third and twice the Prince fourth and Private Smiles is still a trailer. They're on the back stretch. It's almost a match race now. Secretariat's on the inside by a head. Sham is on the outside. They've opened 10 lengths on Mike Gallant, who is third by a head, with Fight the Prince fourth. Then it's another eight lengths back to Private Smiles, who is trailing the field. They continue down the back stretch, and that's Secretariat not taking the lead. He's got it by about a length and a half. Still Sham, 10 lengths back, My Gallant twice the Prince. They're moving on the turn now. For the turn at Secretariat, it looks like he's opening. The lead is increasing. Make it three, three and a half. He's moving into the turn. Secretariat holding on to a large lead. Sham is second, and then it's a long way back to My Gallant and twice the Prince. 
They're on the turn. It's Secretariat is blazing along the first three quarters of a mile in 109 and four fifths. Secretariat is widening now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Secretariat by 12. Secretariat by 14 lengths on the turn. Cham is dropping back. It looks like they'll catch him today as Mike Gallon and Slice of Prince are both coming up to him now. But Secretariat is all alone. He's out there almost a sixteenth of a mile away from the rest of the horses. Secretariat is in a position that seems impossible to catch. He's into the stretch. Secretariat leads his field by 18 lengths. And now Price of Prince is taken second, and Mike Gallant has moved back to third. They're in the stretch. Secretariat has opened a 22-length lead. He is going to be the Triple Crown winner. Here comes Secretariat to the wire. An unbelievable, an amazing performance. He hits the finish 25 lengths in front. It's going to be Price of Prince second, Mike Gallant third. Miles fourth, and Sham, who had it today, dropped back to fifth. An amazing, unbelievable performance by this miracle horse. And look at Everyone has their own special memories of what is still described today as the greatest thoroughbred race in modern history. We broke very good at leaving, leaving the gate there, and uh, the only concern I was there is not falling off even the gate because the last two Triple Crown winner had stumbled bad leaving the gate, assault and uh, citation. And Mr. Lauren had a dream that I fell off leaving the gate, so he kind of put that in the back of my head. But uh, we left very good, and uh, heading into the first turn, I was on the inside, I didn't want to get shut off, shuffle back where I have to take a hold of him, so I just let him ease up in the inside. And he took the lead for a brief moment, and then Sham collared him, uh, took us around the turn. He, uh, I don't know if he broke down or what happened to him, but anyway, he, he had it. He called it the day by the 78 pole, and Secretariat just uh, galloped the rest of the way. Penny Tweedy remembers being concerned early in the race about Secretariat's main rival, Sham, who had finished second, beaten just two and a half lengths in both the Derby and the Preakness. I, I was afraid when Sham went with him that this was going to be the time that Sham was going to get his revenge. And a little part of me said, go for it, Sham, because I had great respect for Sham and felt really sorry that, that he happened to have raced the same year as Secretary, because he was a wonderful horse. But then Sham did draw back, and then I was just in awe. I couldn't believe that he was just going on. And I keep hearing in my mind Chick Anderson's call. Secretariat is moving like a tremendous machine. He's out there all alone. Secretariat is widening now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Secretariat by 12. Secretariat by 14 lengths on the turn. Sham is dropping back. It looks like they'll catch him today as Mike Gallant and Slice of Prince are both coming up to him now. But Secretariat is all alone. He's Lucian and I were side by side, and suddenly Lucian said, Oh my God, Ronnie, just don't fall off. Don't fall off. Don't fall off. <laughs> When you're out alone like that, you keep, you know, you hear the crowd, the uh, the announcer, and I kept hearing him saying 15 lengths, 20 lengths, and finally the 316 pole, I just looked back there and it says, hey, am I really that far in front? Naturally, I couldn't hear anybody, you know, and uh, he was, and when I got by the eight pole, I says, pal, just don't fall down now. Officially, it was 31 lengths. Secretariat had just smashed the world record for a mile and a half on the dirt by two and one-fifth seconds. The new standard was 224 flat. Lucian Lauren vividly remembers looking at that teletimer with those incredible world record fractions. I kept looking every time I thought the thing was broke. It was impossible to run that fast. When you went the first three quarters in nine and four, I says to Mrs. Tweedy at the time, I says, Jesus, God almighty. We, how is he going to last? Going to, he's only halfway and he's going that fast. He's nowhere in the world. And then they run a mile and 34 and three, a mile 
uh, you know, a mile and a quarter and 159 flat, which that would have been the record if, you know, if you would have gone that far. Nobody never broke it yet and never come close to it. And then, as you know, he went to the mile and a half and they claimed that he went the last quarter in 23, I mean, 24 and four or something like that, going a mile and a half. You, it's, it's unbelievable. I said to her when he comes at the head of the stretch, I said, I just hope he gallops him the rest of the way. And you know, Ronnie made a statement. He says that he was running easy. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable it was. Horses are not supposed to be able to run like that. Look at Secretariat's times for each furlong, or eighth of a mile, in that mile and a half Belmont race. None were slower than 12 and 4 fifths seconds. Even with Turcotte standing up as he crossed under the wire, Secretariat's momentum, galloping out an extra eighth of a mile, unofficially eclipsed another record. According to Charles Hatton of the Daily Racing Forum, Secretariat pulled up the mile and five furlongs in 237 and two fifths, which would have shattered that world record held by swaps by four fifths of a second. He was racing's ninth Triple Crown winner, but the first in a quarter of a century since Citation swept the classics in 1948. Secretariat certainly didn't rest on his Triple Crown laurels. He went to Chicago and won the Arlington Invitational by nine lengths, but then was upset in the Whitney at Saratoga by Onion when Secretariat was running at less than 100% after battling a low-grade fever. Next was the race made especially for the Triple Crown winner, the $250,000 Marlboro Cup. It was Meadow Stables' two champions, Reva Ridge and Secretariat, going head-to-head -head for the only time in their careers. And it was another trying moment for the entry's owner, Penny Tweedy. The Marlboro was one of the hardest races for us because I loved both horses. And I, I wanted them to finish about the way they did, but I didn't want Reva to be embarrassed. And I knew that Secretariat was really a stronger and more talented horse. The champion had bounced back and set a new world record for the mile and an eighth, 145 and two. After a loss in the Woodward to prove out, Secretariat made his debut on the turf with a course record clocking of 224 and four in the mile and a half man of war. It's Secretariat, holding on to the lead by two lengths. I have great faith in Lucy, and uh, I think he's a master horseman. And Secretariat's racing career came to a close at Woodbine at the Canadian International Championship. Penny remembers his performance was much better than the weather that October 28, 1973, in Ontario. There was fog, it was sleeting, it was cold, and you could hardly see the race. Um, all I remember, and Ronnie had been set down. He'd been uh, suspended for careless riding, so he couldn't ride him in his final race. And Eddie Maple rode him, and Eddie is a friend, and he was just ashen. He was just white with fear that he would foul up in Secretariat's last race, but, but he didn't. And um, uh, he came sweeping home out of that gloom, and it was just with tremendous relief. You could run him on anything, you know, you could run him on the dirt, you could run, he ran in the mud, he went, he ran on a fast track, run him on the grass, he went. In his last race, I was very, very nervous in Toronto because it rained all day. It was really deep and I was worried, you know, I says, oh my God, he never run on a, a, a deep, you know, grass races and I figure, well, I hope he doesn't slip, you know, sometimes in the grass when it's wet, it slip. But he ran a beautiful race, as you know. The, he, I just think he was the grace of all the horses. On November 6, 1973, Secretariat took his final curtain call, where his racing career began at Aqueduct Racetrack in New York. 
Nearly 33,000 fans turned out on a non-racing day just to say goodbye to the champion. I was unprepared for how badly I'd feel. Uh, there are, I've seen the film of it, and I was, I was on the edge of tears. Other people were crying. Um, 6,000 people came out just to, to see him gallop up and down the stand, the, uh, the stretch there, and he felt that he hadn't done his job. He went out and he warmed up and he came back and then, what's the matter? Aren't I gonna run? Why am I being taken back? And he kind of fought Eddie. It, it, was, it was a hard day, but it was a heartwarming day because so many people came out to just say a personal goodbye to him. On November 11th, Secretariat was flown to Claiborne Farm to begin his career as a stallion. And Penny remembers the emotions of that plane ride to Kentucky. That was sad. We just tried, I guess I only took the plane ride because I was trying to make it not end. The Claiborne people took him right from the plane, put him in their vans and off he went. And uh, it was just terribly hard. As a stallion, he was expected to do the impossible, reproduce himself. Despite these unrealistic expectations, Secretariat still left his mark. He sired the first yearling ever to sell for a million dollars, sired more than 40 stakes winners, including the 1986 Horse of the Year, his daughter, Lady's Secret, and the 1988 Preakness and Belmont Classics winner, Risen Star. Secretariat remained a celebrity long after he left the racetrack. He remained the most talked about and most photographed thoroughbred in the world. On Labor Day 1989, Secretariat was diagnosed as having laminitis. Dr. William Reed of the American College of Veterinary Surgeons. Uh, laminitis actually is a degeneration and inflammation in the foot itself. In the early stages, <clears throat> it is curable with, with adequate treatment. However, it's impossible to determine all stages of laminitis. In other words, it's uh, referring to secretariat, it's impossible to de determine exactly when the early stage was. Some horses are a little bit sore-footed, particularly old horses, older stallions, for example. They have a lot of weight, uh, weight-bearing, and some of them don't take quite as much exercise as they did earlier on, and co consequently, they're prone to laminitis. On October 4th, 1989, at 11.45 a.m. Eastern Time at Claiborne Farm in Paris, Kentucky, the great champion had his life humanely ended, euthanized to prevent further suffering from an incurable condition. At age 19, Secretariat was gone. Buried in the same cemetery at Claiborne as his father, Bold Ruler, and other legends of the turf. At Belmont Park in New York, a special wreath was placed in front of the bronze statue in the paddock to mark his passing. And those that were closest to him reflected on his greatness and on the impact this amazing thoroughbred had on their lives and the lives of so many. Secretary, I didn't never really had anything to do with him. All I did was go in along for the ride. You know, he was he was the most horse. He was so great. He done everything himself. So I I take no credit for what Secretary has done. Um, but like I said, I, I grew close to them because I was I was in every one of their workouts, and uh, I love them. You know, there's many riders that. Uh, it doesn't have the same recognition I have that has won, won more races. And, and I've won a lot, lot of races before that in class six, but uh, I'm known for the boy that rode secretariat, and that's not a bad thing to be known for. His groom, Eddie Sweat, knows that the Big Red Horse made him famous, too. I would say thank you, Big Red, for all the things that you have done for me and for the public of the people. And will there ever be one as good as Secretariat? Not in my time. I guarantee you, not in my time. Maybe he said it. You always find one. It took a, quite a while. That's about, what, a half a century, 50 years from my awarding him. So I don't know. 
if it's going to take that long to get to the next one. Penny Tweedy knew that she had to share his loss, just as she had had to share his life. People all over the world are, are missing the, the, the horse that represented a wonderful dream, a, dr a dream of success and accomplishment on sunny days and, and muddy tracks. Just something special is gone. There have been other thoroughbreds that have won more races, more money, and more championships. That have even won a triple crown. But none had the impact of Secretariat. He came along just when we all needed him the most. 1973 was a difficult year. The time of Nixon and Watergate and the Vietnam War. The country needed a hero. And here was this red horse in blue and white silks, a red, white, and blue hero for America. We honor our heroes with monuments. And so it is fitting that the spirit of this champion thoroughbred be enshrined forever in this bronze statue in the paddock at Belmont Park in New York. Still setting the standard by which all great race horses of today and tomorrow are measured. When the statue was unveiled, prominent horseman Paul Mellon said, Secretariat belongs to history, to the romance of the turf, and he belongs to the people. As a tribute to Secretariat, we present this special music essay the song is by Richard Marks, right here waiting for you. For a quarter of a century, Thoroughbred Racing had waited for a racehorse like Secretariat.
Hello, I'm Penny Chenery, a Secretariat's owner and a member of that wonderful Meadow Stable racing team. I'm still amazed at the enormous affection held for this horse throughout the world. From the first moment, he lit up the national spotlight. Even now, fan letters arrive daily. His place in the public's heart is as fresh and powerful as if he just stepped onto the track. The Secretariat Bronze Fund has been created to finance a life-sized sculpture of him as a memorial that people everywhere can appreciate and enjoy. The statue captures the moment after Secretariat's 1973 record-setting Kentucky Derby. The sculpture shows him in the prime of youth, flushed with victory, straining against Ron Turcott and groom Eddie Sweat's efforts to hold him. It's a thrilling snapshot in time, when the road to immortality still lay ahead at Pimlico and at Belmont. The statue, to be unveiled in conjunction with Secretariat's 30th Triple Crown anniversary, will be installed at the Kentucky Horse Park in Lexington. Contributions to the fund can be made online at secretariat.com or by sending a check or money order to the Bronze Fund, care of secretariat.com, post office box 4865, Louisville, Kentucky, 40204. We call him Big Red. He's one horse and half a million or a million. <laughs> He's most eye-catching. He is the most perfectly conformed, balanced individual. He's a wonder horse. Oh, you can't take nothing away from Secretary. He's just got everything. He's just a super horse. If everybody in the United States love him, and also in Canada, I certainly should love him too, don't you think? <laughs> He's, he really likes people. That's why making him a good horse, I guess. He's a horse he loved to play a lot. Like he picks up his halter and throw it around and he push you around. He's big and strong, but he's not rough. We also get a pony uh, named Bill Silver. He's very much in love with the pony. And uh, when he's uh, away from the pony, he always frets a little. He always wants him by his side. I was working with Mr. Lauren for 18 years. And uh, every good horse he find to run up on, he always switched it to me. So. I love the job, and I love to be around horses. If uh, every horse I rub coming like secretary, I don't think I want to be a trainer. I just want to be a groom. Oh, yes, I mean it from the bottom of my eye. He's such a wonderful horse. You've got to love a horse like that. He's so honest. He tries so hard when you run. Gives you everything else he can give you. Whatever he does is just fantastic every time. Very friendly, good nature horse, and you can do anything in the world with him. He's a very intelligent horse. He's so intelligent that I flew him one day on a DC-9 which is a little low for him. He had to keep his head down. He had enough sense to keep it down all the way till he got off of it. Well, that's how smart he is. Sometimes he can be like an arm baby. Really, he, he can be just like an arm baby. That he can do anything that you want to him. But sometimes he says, well, I don't, I don't want to be bothered. So he goes in, in, in the back of the stall, he step back. He don't want to be bothered. So and once in a while again, then he come to the door, then he want to pull your coat. But he just love people, man. He just watch him, pose for them.
We gallop just like you in a brand new Rolls Royce. We hit a bump, just glide around across, you know? Sometimes that he can get rough. So once in a while I can talk to him, oh, easy. Then he start flicking his A's, you know? Then he come back to me. But when he want to just go, myself, I cannot hold him. But sometimes I can talk to him and he'll calm right now. I can whistle to him sometimes, right? Sometimes I call him Big Red, sometimes I say, come on, Big Bum, you know? And it seems like that he understand. There's an old saying in racing that you read the best to the best and you hope for the very best. Now, this doesn't always work out, but in this case, it certainly has worked out with added bonuses. He happens to be an outstanding looking individual. He's impeccably bred. And of course, his racing record speaks for itself. You know, it's not restricted to just the public. He's really captured the imagination of every horseman. It rather amused me talking to all types of horsemen. They, many of them were very excited that Secretariat was coming, and others just felt that, well, Secretariat wasn't going to put any money in their pocket or any bread on their table, and they were very blasé about the whole situation. But the first day that Secretariat galloped down the turf course, I was amused to see that the racetrack training program just shut right down for about one hour, and all these blasé horsemen stable employees of every description all turned out eager to see the great secretariat. There was considerable uncertainty as well as excitement in the week of secretariat's visit to Woodbine. The great horse was here, but would he really run? It wasn't until three days before the race, when he had his first full workout, that the decision actually was made to run it. His owner, Mrs. Penny Tweedy, and his jockey, Ron Turcott, flew from New York for that final workout. Sent to them a Canadian by Bert, and so is Ronnie, and they come here with a real champion and finish his career in, in Canada, which Mrs. Tweedy, who I think is a good sport woman, to let us come over here and see if we could finish the right way. The first one was classic, because I thought he had some chance to be a classic colt. And the second was something else, which is a play on his dam's name, and then the third was Secretary. Yes, it's uh, one of the greatest things that's happened at Woodward in history. He hasn't won every race, but a uh, uh, horse can't tell you if he isn't feeling well. <laughs> a completely unexpected fog delayed the big horse's final workout. Thousands of people, drawn by the presence of this magnificent horse, came to Woodbine, and some of them waited three hours in the foggy morning for him to work five furlongs over the grass course. I seen a real pen in a long time. <laughs> Ironically, it was a tragic morning for Ron Turcott. At the very moment that he was riding secretariat in the workout at Woodbine, the stewards at Aqueduct in New York were making a decision to suspend him for five days. This meant that he would not be able to ride secretariat in the International, and he would be replaced by jockey Eddie Maple. I think Fred Giles make his French. Hey, look at that horse. Oh, look at him. He's Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Mrs. Tweedy had the mare and wanted to read the bro ruler, so they flipped the coin who got the first foal, and she lost, and the first foal was still a maiden. And you get secretariat. Hadn't she won the flip of the coin, she'd have had the first one, and somebody else would have had the second one. There have been times during secretariat's racing career when I thought he might not be a truly great champion. I went to all of the Triple Crown races and came away in the Derby saying, well, it was a good race, but I'm still not certain. 
after the Preakness, I thought, well, he's a pretty good horse, but I'm going to wait. But I was thoroughly convinced after the Belmont. There was no question in my mind that this was the greatest horse I'd ever seen, and perhaps the greatest ever. Not only was he the only horse to win the American Triple Crown in 25 years, but it was his way of going which stirred the hearts of men. He simply annihilated his three-year-old opponents. I'll never forget the Belmont Stakes. That was the race he won by more than 30 lengths. It was really the most convincing triumph I've ever witnessed in all my years of watching horse racing. I was nervous to get that ahead of the stretch. I thought he could roll home from there on in because he was so far ahead. <laughs> what makes him a great horse, he does everything right. He's very quiet to handle. He doesn't uh, overexcite himself. Just like an old pro, he's out there and he's just doing his thing. He reminds me like of Joe Lewis when he was a fighter, a Babe Ruth. You know, some have it and some don't. Personally, I think Secretary is probably one of the greatest horses of all time, even going back as far as Man of Wars, which such a great horse we've all heard about, probably never seen. Yeah, Man of War. I saw him running in one race. That was in a match race at Candleworth Trace Track in Windsor, Ontario. That's what I saw him, him and Sabart. It's remarkable that the two greatest horses of this century, in America at least, Man of War and Secretariat, both were known as Big Red, and both ran the final races of their careers on Canadian tracks. Both nice horses, but this horse, the Secretariat, broke so many track records. So I think it would be a good race if they had to hook together. But now it happened he's here. Now I'm going to watch him tomorrow racing. The weather for the International was a cruel disappointment. It was the last Sunday in October, cold, bitterly cold and wet. But more than 35,000 people in a personal tribute to a great horse came into Woodbine that afternoon. Undoubtedly, if the weather had even been 10 degrees warmer, it would have been the largest crowd in the history of any Canadian sporting event. Where are you? Where are you? Let me hear you. Where's all the players? We came all the way from New York to watch Secretariat run, and we hope he wins. I come from Guelph, but I'm uh, looking forward to seeing Secretary winning this race today. Oh, I think it'll be a terrific. I wouldn't want to miss him for anything. I don't come that often. I just came today because I want to see Secretariat run. I come to see Secretariat race. I feel this is the last chance I might see Secretariat ever race, so I thought I'd come to see him. Oh, listen, we wouldn't have missed this for anything. If it was four feet of snow, he would have come. It's a super horse. This wasn't to be any walkover. Despite Secretariat's might, 11 horses were entered against him. There were some good ones from Canada. Presidial, Fabe Count, and Twice Lucky. And among the good American imports, there were Golden Dawn, Big Spruce, and Triangular. And of course, Canada's own horse of the year, Kennedy Road. Training a horse like Kennedy Road is like driving your first Cadillac limousine. Uh, it makes you a little nervous. You're afraid you might break it. He's proven himself to be one of the greatest horses ever produced in Canada. It's a great thrill to be able to get on a horse and ride a horse like this, let alone train him. When I was a kid, uh, I used to be so happy when I could ride a really good horse. There's a feeling you get that you can't explain to anybody. In my career, I, I think this is the biggest thrill for me so far, to be able to train a horse like this. Sunday, uh, we're hooking, uh, supposedly, the horse of the century. Kennedy Road, he's in good shape. We ran him last Sunday, broke the Canadian record. Gomez, uh, he's the ideal rider for this horse uh, because of his natural uh, ability to judge time. Secretary got beat two or three times already. Hitler got beat in the Second War. I don't, why, I don't see why he don't got beat. So my chances is very big. I rode him last time. I really got impressed with him. And to me, it's between Secretary and me. Secretary show up in Toronto. He's very, very big help for races in Canada. Even if he get beat by me. This horse, when he comes out of that gate, this he's just going to burst into the legit go. That's what he said. That's what he knows how to. That's the way he runs best. That's the way we're going to do it. And uh, I'm hoping it's a good, hard, fast racetrack, and they'll have to beat the record to beat him. Top of the day. Good horse. You better grab his pictures, because he wins. It'll be the upset of the century. It was admittedly a day of very mixed emotions for one little man, Canadian-born jockey Ron Turcotte. It's like coming home with your own hero. You know, like, uh, he carried me to so many 
uh, notable races, and now he come home and I can't ride him. I think it's very unfortunate. I hope this jockey does just as well. Ronnie played a big part. I think Ronnie was very good. He come up every morning and he worked hard with me. He worked the horse mostly all the time. Uh, and he's, I think that Ronnie Turcot today is probably the best rider in the United States. We try to work together and. He asks me different things about the horse, different feelings when I work him, and then he adjusts the situation the way you think it should be, and we've been a great combination, I think. It's been an incredible experience and uh, satisfaction I have an opportunity to work with a horse like that. He moves so good and so free, and when he runs, he, he runs so fast, you don't really realize how fast he goes because it, it's, uh, he's, he's got so much power and he's got the speed and everything. Like, uh, I don't think no jaw can get on him, and say the time that he went in. I know I can't come come down to the time because he, he does everything so easy. Uh, it's like piloting a jet, I guess. He just pushes the accelerator and he goes on. I don't think the bad condition will affect the horse at all because he's always impressed me like he would run even on broken bottles. I'm very grateful to have had Secretariat in our lives. Uh, my father spent 30 years in racing and developing his broodmare band and to have something like this come out of your own breeding is a tremendous thrill and a great sense of accomplishment. He's so good looking, he captures the imagination of not only the race fan, but the children. The children are crazy about this horse. I want to see Secretariat race. I think Secretariat's a great horse. I think he's so wonderful and so exciting and, and he's brought families out to the racetrack and our mail is full of love and enthusiasm and. I hope that all of this lasts and, and inures to the benefit of, of racing. He has sort of started a resurgence of interest in racing. The average fan was getting older. We weren't getting people out to the racetrack. With all the youngsters that have fallen in love with this horse, if a third of them make their boyfriends take them to the racetrack when they're 18, the Secretariat will have achieved more than just his race record more than his money won and, and more than the number of times you've seen Mrs. Tweedy on television. I found her to be one of the most gracious and charming women I've ever met. I don't know of anyone who would, could have been more cooperative than she was in every phase uh, leading up to the race. I'm delighted that people are glad he's come and are enjoying having him here and seeing as much as we're going to be able to this afternoon. It's bad luck that the weather is not pleasanter, but racing is a matter of luck with the elements, and you can't control these things, so we just have to accept the fact that it's a bad day. The people who really are enthusiastic are here, cold and wet anyway. Secretary loves to run, and this should be communicated to the world, that this is a vital sport. It's an exciting sport, and it's not an exploitation of horses, that there are horses like Secretariat who are sound and able and think running is thrilling. He knows when he wins. He knows when people notice him. Um, it's been a good experience for him, too. There was an added bonus for racing fans. The world's most successful lady jockey, Robin Smith, came from New York to ride triangular in the big race. I decided to be a jockey because I love to ride horses. I love to ride horses fast, and I like competition. And it just seemed like that's what I was born to do. I wanted to be a jockey from the time I, can, I was two or three years old. The only hard time in this business for me is getting an opportunity to ride good mounts, which I attribute to the fact that I'm a girl. They still believe that a girl is not as strong as a male jockey, which is true, but uh, I don't think that that extra strength that men have over women, in the riding profession at least, uh, makes a difference. I think it's finesse and communication with your animal. It's fantastic. I'm glad to see a female jockey getting in the race. I think she has a real good chance. Not bad looking either. <laughs> well, I don't really have any goal in this business other than just riding five or six races a day because it's the only thing that makes me happy. I don't want her to win. I want uh, twice lucky. Number nine is Presidio, written by North America's leading rider, Sandy Holly. Presidio is a good contender. The secretary is the horse to beat, but we'll be out there to beat him. 
Well, I think Secretary's going to go all the way. He went by a, a mile. He's unbelievable. I hope Secretary is going to win. I just hope he wins today because it's his last race. Obviously, he's going to win. What else? He's one of the greatest horses that I've ever seen in my racing time. I've been to quite a few races. If he rode like he did the last time, I don't think it'd be no contest. Everyone is a big one, especially this one. Probably the biggest of all, because that's his last one, and I certainly hate to see him get beat. I'd like to send him home a big winner. The easiest race on paper is the one I find we lose. I cannot pinpoint who I think might beat us, but I certainly worry about today's race, because it does look as if we ought to have a good shot at winning it. So I have to worry. I they're at the post. We're just going to burst out of the gate, and the eyes are just going to be out of this horse's head this high, and he's gone. Like the wild man from Borneo, he's gone. Here are. Kennedy Road comes away quickly on the outside to take the lead. And that is Secretariat now rushing up on the extreme outside to go into contention. As they swing into the far turn, Kennedy Road has the lead by a length and a half. Secretariat is second with Presidio coming on third. Babe Count is fourth along the inside. And now they're midway of the turn as Kennedy Road leads by about two and a half lengths with Secretariat running along second. Again, for seven or eight lengths with Presidio third. And coming into the stretch for the first time, they cross over the main track and it is Kennedy Road on top. And here comes Secretariat on the outside. Kennedy Road leads by two and a half lengths. Secretariat is second with Presidio running along third as Price Lucky moves up fourth. Dave Count is fifth. They get the half in 47 and two and the six furlongs in 111 and three. And they're now heading into the clubhouse turn. It is Kennedy Road on top by a length and a half. Secretariat is second on the outside. Price Lucky is now third with Presidio fourth. Triangular coming on fifth on the outside. Dave Count is sixth down the back stretch. Kennedy Road has the lead. Secretariat closing up alongside. Kennedy Road by a half a length. Secretariat is right there with him. A gap of seven lengths. Price Lucky third. Presidio fourth. Triangular fifth. Dave Count is on the outside. And there he goes. There he goes. Secretariat on the outside. Heading around the turn. Secretariat has the lead. Kennedy Road is second. Price Lucky is third. Presidio is fourth. It is all Secretariat. In the tradition of champions, Secretariat climaxed his career with a smashing triumph. It was an unforgettable moment. That great crowd thundering acclaim as Secretariat smashed his way across the finish line in the final race of his career. What more fitting climax could there have been for the most brilliant and successful season in the long history of Canadian horse racing? A horse come out of the gate, out bolt right into him. And this secretary didn't like. And so it, he pulled himself up and, and uh, waited till they got out of his way. And then he had uh, a long way to go to catch up. And I was looking forward to him on the lead because he had worked five eight and 57 and four or 58 out of the gate about a week before that, you know? I tell you, I shook my head and said, my God. Must have been 20 lengths out of it, and 
then he circled the whole field and come around, and boy, he flew through that stretch. And unfortunately, that was the only time he was really, he was never off the board as far as money's concerned. He wound up, he was fourth. That was just racing luck. I guess he didn't win, but I, again, I don't think he was defeated. He just failed to figure out the game. He got the breaking very slow, you know, so he broke that last again that day. And uh, and Mrs. Sweetie looking at me, and I look at her, so well, maybe I'm not as smart as I thought I was. And by God, when he came around the turn at the uh, aqueduct, which is a kind of a sharp turn, and by the time they hit the quarter pole, he was on the lead. He done it something that I guess that you don't see too many horses do. From the eight pole to the wire, I think he opened up about something like nine lengths. I think he went by nine or ten lengths that day, you know? I put Ron Turcott on him, and Ron rode him, and he done the same thing, come from dead last and surf in the field. He won, but uh, not as impressive as the day broke his maiden, you know? He won by a few lengths, two, three lengths, something like that, I guess.
Between horses, Swift Courier takes the lead by a neck. Out in the middle of the track, Crimson Falcon into second position. What a breeze, ranging up quickly now between horses. Down the back stretch, Swift Courier has the lead by a neck with What a Breeze in second position by three parts of length. On the outside, Crimson Falcon is third with Gallant Knave toward the rail fourth by a half. Stop the music in fifth position. Secretariat is sixth and Torsion seventh. They round the fire turn, Swift Courier in front by one length with what a breeze, second a neck. Crimson Falcon on the outside, now a closer third. A length and a half farther back, Gallant Knave. Along the inside is fourth. Secretariat moving up on the outside and stop the music, gaining ground along the inside. Torsion is seventh as the field moves to the top of the stretch. On the outside, what a breeze, takes the lead by a neck. Along the inside, Swift Courier second. There goes Secretariat with a rush on the outside, getting the lead. Secretariat now in front by a length. Swift Courier toward the inside second. Stop the music, moving up on the far outside. 70 yards from the finish. It's Secretariat in front. Stop the music second. On the far outside, Rays and Rural goes for the lead. In the middle of the track, Zach of Spirit ranging up from two yards next. On the inside, Osage River and Angle Light. Down the back stretch, Angle Light on the inside takes command by a neck. And that's Osage River in second position with Rapid Sage moving up to be third. On the far outside, Zach of Spirit is fourth at this point. Expression races fifth. After that, it's Puntilla six, followed on the outside by Linda's Creek. After that, it's Stop the Music, Raise and Roar, a gap of four lengths back to Step Nicely, Secretariat, and Stunt Link. Moving past the half mile tour, Underlight has the lead by one length. Up on the outside, there goes Linda's Creek with a rush, and Puntilla closes ground between horses. Three of them heads it back. I got the two and a half lengths back to Raise and Roar, now moving up flat. Between horses, expression is flat. On the outside, stop the music six, and Secretariat moves to the middle of the track. At the quarter pole, it's Linda's Creek in front by a neck. Puntilla along the inside, coming on again. Secretariat moves up third, stop the music is flat. And down the stretch they come. That's Secretariat on the outside, getting the lead. Along the inside, Puntilla second, stop the music, and step nicely. 70 yards from the finish, it's Secretariat in front. Under the wire, Secretariat with Jockey Ron Turcott. Duality between horses on the outside, Impecunious challenging with Close Image third, and Champagne Charlie on the inside fourth. A gap of two and a half lengths to Secretariat fifth, and Torsion on the outside is sixth. Down the back stretch, Close Image now takes the lead by a length and a quarter. Actuality is second by a length and a quarter, Impecunious third by two. After that, it's Champagne Charlie fourth, Secretariat is fifth, and Torsion. Nearing the half-mile pole, Close Image holds on to the lead by two lengths. Actuality is second by a half. Impecunious on the outside, now a closer third. Champagne Charlie moving up fourth on the outside. Secretariat fifth and Torsion past the three-eighth pole. It's Close Image in front by a head. Impecunious now up to challenge with Champagne Charlie joining the leaders. Secretariat is fourth and Actuality finds room on the rail. 
The field straightens away in the stretch. Impecunious has the lead by a head. Actuality second between horses Secretariat and on the outside Champagne Charlie. Four of them across the track with an eighth of a mile to the finish. Secretariat getting the lead. Champagne Charlie on the outside second. Toward the rail, it's Actuality. 70 yards from the finish. It's Secretariat in front. Secretariat now in front by three parts of a length. Dawn Flight is second to half. Champagne Charlie third on the outside. A gap of two and Harrison Kidd. Racing to the top of the stretch, Secretariat shows the way by two and a half lengths. Champagne Charlie is second a length and a half. Dawn Flight is third and Harrison Kidd past the quarter pole. With Secretariat now in front by a length and a quarter. Champagne Charlie on the outside up to challenge. Down the stretch they come. Secretariat on the rail. Champagne Charlie on the outside, an eighth of a mile to the finish. Secretariat on the inside in front by half a length. Champagne Charlie second, 70 yards from the finish. It's Secretariat now in front. the middle of the track that's angle light getting the early lead sham along the inside is second champagne charlie between horses third leo's pisces is fourth followed by step nicely fifth after that it's expropriate sixth along the inside flush and secretariat on the outside they go to the back stretch with angle light now in front by three parts of a length and that's sham on the outside second by a length and a quarter Champagne Charlie is third at this point by three parts of a length. Leo's Pisces fourth by a head. Step nicely fifth. Expropriate on the rail is sixth. That Secretariat on the outside seventh. A gap of five lengths and flush. Down the back stretch nearing the five eighth pole. Angolite has the lead by a length and three quarters with Sham second by two lengths. Champagne Charlie third by one. Step nicely moving up now fourth. Secretariat on the outside is now fifth a half, followed by expropriate Leo's Pisces and far back flush. As they move to the far turn, Angolite holds on to the lead by a length and three quarters. Sham is second by one. Champagne Charlie third by a neck and step nicely on the outside is fourth. Secretariat is fifth. They come now to the top of the stretch. Angolite in front by three parts of a length as Sham moves up on the outside second. After that, it's Champagne Charlie third, step nicely fourth, and Secretariat in the middle of the track. They straighten away in the stretch. Angolite holding on to the lead by a length now. Sham second, Champagne Charlie third. Far outside, it's Secretariat fourth. Coming to the 16th ball, Angolite in front by a length and a quarter. Sham is second. 70 yards in the finish, it's Angolite in front. Sham on the outside. Secretariat throws his head a bit. And they're off for the lead. On the inside, that's Angolite for the lead. On the outside, Shecky Green, Royal and Regal. Then on the rail, it's Restless Jet, followed by our natives. Up on the outside is Gold Bag. They're by the stands for the first time. Shecky Green is showing the way by a length and a half. Royal and Regal now being moved to the inside, looking for room. Gold bag is up on the outside. Then on the rail, it's Angolite, followed by Sham, our native, Restless Jet. It's my gallant, then Forgo. On the outside, Navajo, followed by Secretariat, Warbuck. 
And finally, twice a prince. They're moving on the turn. The leader is Shecky Green, leading by two and a half lengths. Goldbag is second by a head. Jam now third on the outside by two lengths. Royal and Regal fourth. Two lengths then back to Angle Light in fifth. The Secretariat has made a sudden move and is now sixth. Then it's Restless Jet, our native beginning to move up. Navajo, Borgo, and Warbucks beginning to move up, followed by My Gallant and Twice a Prince. They're into the turn and bunching for the lead with Shecky Green, still the leader by a half a length. On the outside and challenging is Sham, and he's now got a head in front. Now Shecky Green responds to the challenge, and those two are heads apart. Royal and Regal is third and holding on. Goldbag drops back. Secretariat is fourth and moving up on the outside and is now third and moving at the leaders as they come for the head of the stretch. They're at the head of the stretch and Cham is the leader. He leads it by a length. Secretariat is in the center of the racetrack and driving. Checky Green now drops back. Coming on a bit is Forgo, our native on the outside. Now and they're in the stretch. It's sec Secretariat. Secretariat on the outside to take the lead. Cham holding in second. It's Secretariat moving away. He has it by two and a half. Sham, then on the outside, our native. At the wire, it's going to be Secretariat. He wins it by two lengths. Sham is second. Our native third by an inch. Borgo is fourth. Restless Jet is fifth. And it looked like Navajo might have gotten up for six. We'll have that for you in just a moment. Right now, let's take a look as they go around the turn. The Big Horse, the $6 million syndication, Secretariat... in just a moment. He likes to lean against the back of the gate, which makes him start slowly, and they'll, they'll be careful with him. And now, as Secretary goes, and he doesn't even want to go in the gate, let alone not lean against the back of it. With three horses in, I'm going to give this to Chick Anderson, who will call the race for you. Our native now into the gate. We're waiting for Torsion. He's in and now moving into the starting gate. We're about ready to go as a coletage. We'll complete the field on the outside. They're all in. They all seem to be standing well. Sham straightens up a little. Secretariat bobs his head. We're still looking. And they're off. Oh, the early lead. That's Deadly Dream on the outside. A coletage. Then it's also Torsion on the outside. They're coming by us. It's a coletage getting it. Needs to moving away by about two and a half as they pass the stands. Seven Settling into second, Torsion. Sham has good position, third on the rail. It's another three lengths back, Deadly Dream. Then our native and Secretariat is last again as they move into the first turn. They're into the turn. A coletage has it by two lengths. Torsion second by a length, and then Sham third. Sham under an easy hold right now. But here comes Secretariat. He's moving fast, and he's going to the outside. He's going for the lead, and it's right now he's looking for it. Ronnie Turcott sends him alongside a coletage. Here we have it. A Taj is the leader, but Sham, rather, Secretariat is right alongside. Then still further back, that is Sham now going to the outside in third. We're moving down the back stretch. Secretariat holding it by a length and a half. Here comes Sham second on the outside now. Now it's Secretariat the leader by a length and a half with Sham moving into second. And it looks like Ecole Taj has had it, dropping back in third. Coming on in fourth is our native, and he's pretty close. Torsion fifth, and a trailer way back is Deadly Dream. They're on the turn, and here's the race, folks. Secretariat trying to hold it, and Sham is driving to get him. These two are beginning to open a few lengths as our native settles into third. Third, and he has about three lengths on Ecole Taj. Head of the stretch, Secretariat, two and a half. Sham under a strong left-handed whip, and he's making the run now, but it's still Secretariat holding on. Secretariat by two lengths. Sham driving second. There's a strong left-handed whip again by Pinkai. He goes to it time and time again, but Ronnie Turcott has his whip put away, and Secretariat has him put away. He's beginning to draw away. It is Secretariat. again by the big strong secretariat who made a very very swift move on the back stretch. 
going in fine today. Yes, he's in and well. And Sham now going in. He's the outside horse, and we're ready to go for this tremendous Belmont State. Everybody's in line, and they're off. Looks like the early lead goes to Mike Gallant. Yes, Mike Gallant going for the lead with Christ the Prince on the outside. Secretary to weigh very well, has good position on the rail, and in fact is now going up with the leader. They're moving for the first turn. It is Secretariat. Sham on the outside is also moving along strongly. And now it's Sham. Sham and Secretariat are right together into the first turn. Mike Gallant has third behind them. Then it's twice the Prince, and the trailer is Private Smiles as they go by the turn. Those two together, Sham on the outside. Sham getting ahead in front as they move around the turn with Secretary at second. Then there's a large gap. Make it eight lengths back to Mike Gallant in third and Vice of Prince fourth. And Private Smiles is still the trailer. They're on the back stretch. It's almost a match race now. Secretariat's on the inside by a head. Sham is on the outside. They've opened 10 lengths on Mike Gallant, who is third by a head, with Vice of Prince fourth. Then it's another eight lengths back to Private Smiles, who is trailing the field. They continue down the back stretch, and that's Secretariat not taking the lead. He's got it by about a length and a half. Still Sham, ten lengths back, Mike Gallant, Vice of Prince. They're moving on the turn now. For the turn, it's Secretariat. It looks like he's opening. The lead is increasing. Make it three, three and a half. He's moving into the turn. Secretariat holding on to a large lead. Sham is second, and then it's a long way back to Mike Gallant and Vice of Prince. They're on the turn. It's Secretariat is blazing along the first three quarters of a mile in 109 and four fifths. Secretariat is widening now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Secretariat by 12. Secretariat by 14 lengths on the turn. Sham is dropping back. It looks like they'll catch him today as Mike Allen and Vice of Prince are both coming up to him now. But Secretariat is all alone. He's out there almost a sixteenth of a mile away from the rest of the horses. Secretariat is in a position that seems impossible to catch. He's into the stretch. Secretariat leads his field by 18 lengths. And now Twice a Prince has taken second, and Mike Gallant has moved back to third. They're in the stretch. Secretariat has opened a 22-length lead. He is going to be the Triple Crown winner. Here comes Secretariat to the wire. An unbelievable, an amazing performance. He hits the finish 25 lengths in front. It's going to be Twice a Prince second. And that's rule by reason. Between horses, on the outside, there goes Onion, and West Coast Scout is now third. That's Secretary at fourth, and True Knight is fifth as they round the clubhouse turn. Onion takes command now, moving quickly to a two-and-a-half length lead, with West Coast Scout second by ahead, ruled by reason, alongside third. A gap of two lengths, Secretariat is fourth, three lengths farther back, True Knight, as the field moves on to the back stretch. Onion has the lead by a length and three quarters. West Coast Scout is second on the inside by three parts of a length. Ruled by reason next, and there goes Secretariat moving through along the inside now to be fourth. A gap of six lengths and true night. Down the back stretch, it's Onion showing the way by a length and a half. And on the outside, West Coast Scout second ahead. There's Secretariat, a closer third on the inside, moving to the leader. Two and a half lengths farther back, ruled by reason. Eight lengths, and it's true night fifth. They go past the half mile pole into the fire turn. Onion in front by a length. That's Secretariat on the inside, taking over second position, moving to the leader. West Coast Scout is now third with rule by reason. Fourth far back, it's True Knight. On the fire turn, Onion in front by a head. Secretariat on the rail, now up to challenge for the lead. Coming to the top of the stretch, it's Onion on the outside. And Secretariat on the rail, up to challenge. They turn for home. There's three sixteenths of a mile to the finish. It's Onion on the outside. Secretariat on the rail, stride for stride, head and head and down the stretch they come. Onion on the outside, Secretariat on the rail. An eighth of a mile to the finish. The leaders head and head, stride for stride. Secretariat and Onion. Onion has the lead by ahead. Secretariat on the inside, past the sixteenth ball. It's Onion in front by her head on the inside, Secretariat. And they're off. 
On the outside, that's Kennedy Road going for the early lead. Annihilate him is second, with Reva Ridge out in the middle of the track, moving up now to challenge. That's Reva Ridge on the outside. And along the inside, there goes Onion now moving to contention. Onion on the rail, Reva Ridge on the outside, those two heads apart. Kennedy Road is now third by a length and a half. Annihilate him is fourth, a length and a quarter. Secretariat now fifth on the outside. Gamble five lengths, key to the mid is next. Six lengths farther back, it's Cougar. They continue down the back stretch. Onion in front by a length. With Reva Ridge on the outside, second, three parts of a length. Annihilate him on the rail is third. Kennedy Road fourth. Secretariat on the outside fifth. Those five are tightly bunched as they move past the five-eighth pole. It's six lengths farther back to key to the mid and another six to Cougar. Around the far turn now, there goes Reva Ridge up on the outside to challenge Onion. Reva Ridge gets the lead by a head. Onion on the rail drops back second. Here comes Secretariat joining the leaders. Reva Ridge has the lead by a head. Onion on the rail is second. Secretariat on the outside charges up third. Annihilate him is fourth along the rail. Kennedy Road is fifth. As the field comes to the top of the stretch, the entry now running one, two from the Meadow Stable. It's Reva Ridge on the rail in front by a head. Secretariat on the outside challenging. There's a quarter of a mile to the finish. Secretariat on the outside. And Reva Ridge on the rail, three sixteenths of a mile to the finish. On the outside, Turcotte takes Secretariat up now, taking the lead by a length. Reva Ridge is second. The rest of them fire back as they come into the final sixteenth of a mile. On the outside, it's Secretariat. Secretariat in front by two. Reva Ridge second and Cougar. Secretariat in front. Ranging up alongside the challenge for the early lead. Summer Guest is now third, and on the outside, that Secretariat fourth. A gap of a length and three quarters, and Cougar is fifth as they head to the clubhouse turn. Prove out in front by three parts of a length. That Secretariat on the outside taking over second position. Amen is now third, skimming the rail by three parts of a length. Summer Guest fourth on the outside, and Cougar is fifth as they round the clubhouse turn and move to the back stretch. Prove out in front by one length now. Secretariat on the outside is second by two and a half lengths. Amen races third ahead. Summer Guest inching up on the outside, now fourth. And a length and a half farther back, Cougar is fifth. They move on to the back stretch with Provout maintaining the lead now by half length. So on the outside, that's Secretariat. Now up to challenge. There goes Secretariat on the outside, getting the lead. Secretariat in front now by a length and a half. Provout drops back second, a gap of four lengths. Cougar now takes over third position toward the inside. Amen is fourth between horses, and on the outside, Summer Guest fifth. Down the back stretch, Secretariat holding on to the lead now by a length and three quarters. Prove out is second as Cougar moves up on the outside, now a closer third. Amen is fourth and Summer Guest. The five really tightly bunched as they move around the far turn. Secretariat in front by a length and three quarters. And Prove out on the inside is now second by three parts of a length. Cougar on the outside third, followed by Amen. Summer Guest dropping back fifth. As they move to the three-eighth pole, it's Secretariat in front, holding on to the lead by two lengths. On the inside, Prove out second ahead. Amen moves up, now taking over the third spot. Cougar along the rail is fourth by five. And Summer Guest, now there's a quarter of a mile to the finish. And on the outside, it's Secretariat in front by ahead. Here comes Prove out. Back into contention on the rail. Now those two are heads apart. Secretariat on the outside. Prove out gets the lead. Prove out in front by one length. Jorge Velazquez taking the lead with Prove out. Secretariat drops back. It's Prove out in front, a 16th of a mile. Prove out in front, Secretariat second.
that's a no-no between horses. After that, it's triangular out in the middle of the racetrack. London Company moving up. And Tim Tam is on the rail, past the stands for the first time. A no-no in front ahead. There goes Secretariat, boldly moving through between horses, getting the lead by three parts of a length. A no-no drops back second. Tim Tam on the rail is third. West Coast Scout fourth at this point. Triangular is now fifth on the hedge. London Company on the outside, a gap of three and a half lengths, and Big Spruce seventh as they round the clubhouse turn. Secretariat now leads by two and a quarter lengths. A no-no is second by one. That's Tim Tam racing third by a length and three quarters. West Coast Scout fourth by a length and a half. London Company fifth, triangular on the edge, and far back, Big Spruce. The field moves on to the back stretch now with Secretariat enjoying a two and a half length advantage. There goes Tim Tam moving up along the edge, followed by a no-no on the outside, now third. Three lengths farther back, it's West Coast Scout, London Company, Triangular, and Big Spruce down the back stretch. Secretariat in front by three parts of a length. Tim Tam is now second on the outside. Gap of three lengths, a no-no races third by two. West Coast Scout is fourth. London Company now moving on the outside fifth. Triangular is next. And Big Spruce, they go to the far turn. Secretariat now draws away to lead by three and a half lengths. Tim Tam dropping back second by two. A no-no is third as they round the far turn. It's Secretariat. Ron Turk out aboard. In front by two. Tim Tam now trying to close the gap again. It's six lengths farther back to a no-no in London Company. As they come to the top of the stretch, Secretariat has the lead by half a length. On the outside, Tim Tam is now second by seven. Triangular moves to the middle of the track to be third. London Company, a no-no, West Coast Scout and Big Spruce, they're in the stretch. It's Secretariat holding on to the lead by two lengths. Tim Tam is second. The other far back into the final furlong. Secretariat has the lead by three. It's Tim Tam second. Past the 16th pole. Ron Turk out aboard Secretariat. Secretariat in front. Lucky is fifth. Triangular is on the outside and coming into the stretch for the first time. They're getting set to cross over. They cross over the main track and it is Kennedy Road on top. And here comes Secretariat on the outside. And now let's hear from Ron Turcott and Eddie Arcaro. Well, that horse in the, in the lead looks quite ranked there and going fast enough, but Eddie's got the other one well in hand and Secretary well in hand and uh, relax. Ron, uh, Secretary doesn't look like a very hard horse to rate, is he? No, he's very easy. You just sit there with a uh, light hold off him and he relax and race himself good. It is Kennedy Road on top by a length and a half. Secretariat is second on the outside. Twice Lucky is now third with Presidio fourth. Triangular coming on fifth on the outside. They count as six. Tico's Donna is seven. And now again, two great jockeys to comment. Ron and Eddie. Well, Ron, this horse looks like he's got... Oh, oh Eddie, looks like he's coming out and brushing in. Well, he's all right now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in no trouble. It doesn't look like Ron. He's running like a champion should run. Yep. He's, uh, now he's pulling away from him now. That's good. That'd probably knock him off stride for a jump there or so. There he goes. There he goes. Secretariat on the outside. Heading around the turn. Secretariat has the lead. Kennedy Road is second. Twice Lucky is third. Presidio is fourth. It is all. Secretariat gets set. He's coming for home. He's coming to the head of the stretch. And he now in front by about six lengths with Kennedy Road second. The crowd is standing and they're cheering because this is his last race. He's in the stretch in a blaze of glory. Secretariat, ladies and gentlemen, he's all yours and he's coming to the wire. He's on top now by about 10 or 12. 
down length. Secretariat has it. And it's going to be a race for the second money between 